is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us to start your Sunday. I'm Maggie Vespa. And topping our headlines this morning, Eugene police identify the man shot and killed by officers outside a middle school. What we've learned about him this morning. Plus, a second Oregon football player sues the school for millions, saying workouts under head coach Willie Taggart were so grueling they damaged his kidneys. But before we get to the news of the day, Keely Chalmers is standing by with your Sunday forecast. Hey, Keely. Hey, good morning. Yeah, lots of sunshine in your Sunday forecast. The winds, well, they're going to pick up a little bit this afternoon. Going to make for a breezy day, but a sunny day. We're at 38 degrees right now, so certainly chilly. It's going to be a chilly start to your Sunday, but we will start warming up 47 by noon. Those breezes, they're going to start picking up as well. We'll be around 50 degrees by 5 o'clock clear and breezy will probably top out around 51, maybe 52 degrees. But the rain, it is going to hold off not just today, but for several more days. We'll talk about when the rain returns coming up in your full forecast. Maggie. All right, Healy, sounds good. Thank you very much. Well, our top story this morning, police again have identified the man shot and killed outside of a Eugene Middle School on Friday. They say he is 30 year old Charles Frederick Landeros of Eugene, and that is video of him right there from when he was a student at the University of Oregon. Our news partners KEZI in Eugene interviewed him when he was part of a protest in fall of 2017. Friday, police say he went inside Cascade Middle School and got into an argument about child custody. The police were called and were told he was asked to leave. Police say as they were escorting him out of the building, Landero started fighting and that's when they say he pulled out a gun. An officer shot and killed him. No one else was hurt. And of course, the school, as we covered, went into lockdown. In Aloha, authorities say the two people found dead in a mobile home on Friday died by murder-suicide. Police say 23-year-old David Gellings stabbed and killed his 49-year-old mother, Lisa, and then shot and killed himself. This happened at the Pine Ridge Mobile Park on 195th. A friend found the bodies inside the unit where both Gellings and his mother lived. No word on a motive. An expecting couple needs your help. Someone stole their truck and a bunch of baby supplies three weeks before their due date. Sarah Leal says early Friday morning in Aloha, a thief made off with her and her boyfriend's Suburban. It had a new car seat and a stroller inside as well as other baby supplies. It is a tough blow for the growing family. I'm not working right now. It's too difficult. He's the only one that works and bills and trying to buy all the baby stuff that we need, trying to save up. I just want my stuff back. That's it. <laughs> we have like five kids between us, so that car is perfect. Oh yeah, that is just awful all around. So the truck is a 2004 Chevy Suburban. The license plate is CA50705. If you spot it, call police. Well, caught on camera, an armed robbery in Northeast Portland. Take a look at this. Business owners at the Union Market on Northeast MLK. I hope this video leads to an arrest. This was all you could see of the man last night. There's his face, or what you can see of it right there. His hood pulled tight as he walks out of the store. This just minutes after the cashier says that man walked in holding a gun and said, give me the money. They handed him about $200 and owners say he walked out, then it took off on a bike. If you know who he is, call Portland police. Well, three University of Oregon football players say workouts were so hard under former coach Willie Taggart, their kidneys are damaged. And earlier this week, one of them took his case to court. Now a second has followed suit and the third Cam McCormick announced yesterday he will not. KGW's Art Edwards has that story. McCormick tweeted today he will not join Doug Brenner and Sam Patasi in negligence lawsuits. In the tweet, he said he wanted to make a public announcement that he respects his teammates and their decision. He also said he looks forward to putting the unfortunate situation behind him and moving forward. McCormick was hospitalized along with Doug Brenner and Sam Patasi. Patasi filed his $5 million lawsuit Thursday in Multnomah County Circuit Court. Patasi claims the University of Oregon was negligent for failing to prohibit, regulate, or supervise the workouts. Also, that former head coach Willie Taggart 
and Arelli Odorindi were negligent. The NCAA is also named in the suit. Taggart and Odorindi are now both at Florida State. Brenner's $11.5 million lawsuit was filed on Wednesday. He played four years at Oregon. Taggart had just been hired as Oregon's football coach. At his introductory press conference, he talked about a change coming to the Oregon football program. Military-style off-season workouts followed. And they started with these workouts that were aimed not to get us better at football, but to break us, to break our will, to see who would quit. Brenner, Patasi, and McCormick all ended up in the hospital suffering from rhabdobiolysis. For Brenner, it was life-changing. It was scary, and there was a lot of pressure because they were new coaches, and we really wanted to impress them. And that was Art Edwards reporting. And by the way, in a statement, the university says, quote, the well-being and safety of our students are our top priorities at the University of Oregon. We have been advised of the litigation filed and we will respond appropriately in the court proceedings, end quote. Well, the partial government shutdown switching gears this morning is now the longest in U.S. history. It's gone on for three full weeks. Hundreds of thousands of federal workers are sitting at home or working without pay or they've gotten other jobs in the meantime. Air traffic controllers are suing the Trump administration over the shutdown. They are among those who still have to show up for work. They watch over two million people in the skies every day. But we just need the government shutdown to end before the distractions of going months, if not years, without a paycheck begin to decay the level of safety that we've become accustomed to. The sticking point, of course, funding for President Trump's proposed border wall. Democrats say the top priority should be to reopen the government and then continue discussions on border security. Back here at home, auditors say Oregon's largest school district needs to make some big changes. Their audit of Portland Public Schools show things like expensive ship rentals, like that one right there for retirement parties, airline tickets, and questionable food charges. KGW's Lindsay Nadrich looked through the report and spoke with district leaders. The Department of Education and PPS audit found questionable expenses, including a $13,000 retirement party for district employees in 2017. That includes paying $9,000 to rent the Portland Spirit River cruise. The district also paid more than a grand for lays and other flowers to be shipped from Hawaii and roughly $1,700 for crystal clock retirement gifts. The district also rented the boat last year, but says it won't happen again. I don't believe that's a good way to spend our money. Plain and simple. This act activity has been discontinued. We have, uh, will find another way to honor our retirees, our hardworking staff. The audit also found some questionable meal charges and Amazon purchases. Moving forward, the district says charges like those will be reviewed. That spending is having a ripple effect. The report found there's a huge achievement gap between white students and minorities at PPS. That's higher than the state average. State Representative Julie Parrish says that's unacceptable. Money has to follow the child. When the legislature puts in dollars for children who are in poverty or they're homeless or maybe it's a pregnant teenager and those kids sometimes tend to be in schools that are higher community color. You cannot then have more expensive teachers over at, you know, higher uh, uh, proficiency schools and wonder why you have an achievement gap. The audit also found high poverty schools have a tough time keeping quality principals, have less experienced teachers and have a high rate of teacher turnover. The district superintendent says they're already working to make improvements. Soon we, we will have an intervention plan for supporting schools and we need to address the human capital issue. Uh, which creates these kinds of instabilities. All right, that was Lindsay Nadrich reporting. And by the way, we posted a link to the full report at KGW.com. And Oregon Governor Kate Brown responded to the audit, saying she is immediately convening school leaders statewide to identify strategies to ensure public dollars are well managed to best serve students. We'll stay on that story for you.